want to share with you guys the title. The book is called Girl Who Was Supposed to Die. It's written by April Henry. Um, in this book, I would probably rate it five stars, um, especially if you like suspense. The main character, actually we don't find out her name until the very end, because the book actually opens with her regaining consciousness, and the only thing, she can't see anything, but she hears these two men, and one man is telling the other one, go ahead and take her out back and finish her off. And as she is slowly coming to, she's beginning to realize how much pain she is in, and she doesn't know where she is, nor does she know who she is. As the book goes on, it turns out that she has been kidnapped, and she has completely lost all memory of who she was, why she was kidnapped. The only reason why she knows that she's kidnapped is because two men are literally trying to chase her down and kill her. She's able to get away from the two men who take her out back to finish her off. And she begins to realize, wow, I didn't realize I knew karate, but apparently she does. She's great at self-defense, but she doesn't know why. And she goes back to the cabin, finds her way back to this cabin, and she sees a picture, and she's looking at it, and she's like, they look familiar. But then again, she doesn't even look familiar. Her own face doesn't look familiar. She's in so much pain because they have obviously been torturing her and beating her, literally trying to get out information, but she doesn't know what information she's looking for. She doesn't know who her parents are. She gets into a car, and again, we're like maybe in chapter two at this point. She gets into the car and she realizes, I don't even know if I know how to drive. Again, she doesn't even know who, who she is, so she doesn't have a name at this point in the book. And she realizes, whenever she puts the car in drive, that, well, we've got to figure it out real quick, all right? She actually, the bad guys, And throughout this entire book, she is fighting for her life, for a life that she doesn't know anything about, for a family that she doesn't know if they even exist. And she finds it all with the help of one random stranger that she decides to actually trust. And this is the very beginning of chapter 10. Day one, 7.56 p.m. When I walk into McDonald's, a handful of people are seated in the bolted down swivel chairs. I count one older guy, a guy dressed in a suit, and two parents with a young girl and a baby in a carrier. Even though the girl looks only about nine and the baby's younger than the toddler in the photo, I wonder if that's what my family looks like when we go out to eat. Do we go to McDonald's? When the mom gets up to get more napkins, the girl dangles a tiny stuffed black and white zebra above the baby's face. The baby laughs and the girl giggles. Is that the kind of thing I do? Did? When the dad looks at me with narrowed eyes, I realize I'm staring and I turn away. I lean against the counter where you get ketchup and straws and try to figure out what to eat. On the dollar menu, there are a couple of burger-like things, a McDonald, a McDouble, and a McChicken. The McDon McDouble looks bigger, so I'll get that. Even though a side salad would probably be healthier, I decide to get a small order of fries with my last full dollar. I wonder what the real me would have gotten. Maybe I'm a vegetarian? The only cashier has been standing behind the register the whole time waiting for me. He looks about my age with short black hair and long sideburns that end near his earlobes. When I walk up, his thick brows pull together and his brown eyes narrow like he really sees me. His name tag says Thai and under that is a little ad for a filet of fish. I'm so hungry that even the tiny photo of a fish sandwich with processed yellow cheese and what looks like mayonnaise glopping out the sides looks really good. Can I have a McDouble and a small order of fries? I look down at the quarters in my hand and then back up at him. And is it possible to get a cup of water? When he notices me checking my money, Ty's lips press together. He looks over his shoulder at the cook, a big guy wearing a too small uniform who's busy lowering some fries in the hot oil. I'm supposed to charge you for the cup, he says in a low voice, but let's just pretend I forgot, okay? I nod. The tears, which weren't very far away, threaten to come back. Thanks, I appreciate it. I had a bad day which is an, such an unbelievable understatement that I snort and start to smile. <laughs> that is our other character that we meet right there very briefly, Ty. Ty actually tries to help our main character um, figure out who she is, why she is being hunted by these people. 
who end up coming to McDonald's in just a couple of paragraphs and literally trying to hunt her down and kill her. It's a great book. Um, read it a couple weeks ago, and this is actually what we're doing with our 